Some games are terrible, but you love them anyway. You know the score. Let's do this. Well, I've made it very clear about my love for Rambo the video game. It's obviously not a good finished product in the traditional sense. It's a light gun experience that was released in 2014 without a light gun. And Rambo's face looks like it's constantly melting. It's also questionable technically. But with all that said, Reef Entertainment's slice of nonsense is fun. Almost criminally so if you play it in co-op with a friend. You'll laugh, you'll cry because of the laughter, and then you'll keep on going, even though you're not entirely sure as to why. The point is, if a video game is entertaining, then the rest of its chemical makeup can be largely ignored. As a great man once said, let's put a smile on that face. Hmm. That's actually terrible, terrible context. A spec warrior. One who gives a fuck. That's me. Holy shit is Rogue Warrior terrible. A genuine mess of a game, it barely works for the most part and, furthermore, is over so quickly we will have to question whether a large chunk of it just went missing from the point of production to it hitting retail. It's like Developer Rebellion just forgot what it was doing. One of its biggest criticisms though is its main character, one Richard Demo Dick Markinko, voiced by Mickey Rourke. Now, the rogue warrior you'd see what they did there. It's so foul-mouthed and, to be blunt, moronic, you can't help but get some sick and twisted enjoyment out of proceedings. It's like you're controlling an angst teen who somehow morphed into a grown man. Rogue Warrior, then, is essentially big too, but without Tom Hanks. Throw in that its take on the Cold War feels like it was written by a bunch of school children, and you have a game that will leave you in stitches, but for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> I hate Deadly Premonition. I think it's the slowest paced game ever made, and the sole occasion I tried to play it I had to stop myself from falling asleep. I don't think things like this are funny, quirky or silly. Did you see that, Zach? Clear as a crisp spring morning. F. K. In. The coffee. And I'll be damned if I'm ever going to try and play it again. But seemingly I'm in the minority. A quick look at any aggregator site will show you that for as much hate as there is towards the Prem, there's an exceptional amount of love for it too. Perfect scores, glowing tributes, people professing their out and out love for it. It is, in many ways, the true equivalent of Marmite in video gaming. Designed to split opinion until the sun explodes and we all die. Then it doesn't matter anymore anyway. Yes, Duke Nukem Forever is a sad joke, and, as one website once said, would have benefited those behind it more if the source code had been fired off into the sun. It's true too, and the monstrous delay it suffered did nothing but run the whole idea into the ground. It's a terribly sad full stop for a franchise that was once firing on all cylinders, and yet sitting down with Duke in 2011 did have some redeeming features. Namely the always classic, this is so bad it's good scenario. Taking everything into account, the insanely long development time, the changing of publishers, the will it won't it question, the fact people actually worked on this thing for well over a decade, makes forever ridiculous. It has weird drawing set pieces. You drive miniature cars around lobbies as aliens attack. You fight an octopus underwater. It's all so absurd that it becomes somewhat entertaining, even though it's, without doubt, a pile of nonsense. <laughs> The list of problems that can be attached to the abomination that was Sonic the Hedgehog would take an age to go through. The major one, naturally, being that it features bestiality. Look at that. A human woman kissing a hedgehog animal. What the hell? However, I'm not sure we can take umbrage with all these faults, mostly because some are painfully funny. Anyone who approaches it for a serious gaming experience will want to top themselves, for the fiddly controls alone if nothing else. But those who fancy toying with a mistaken masterpiece will experience a video game killing them for absolutely no reason. And seriously, on occasion you literally just die. Flying across gaping chasms if Sonic is an aeroplane and being sucked into nearby walls and being stuck there. Until you get bored and decide to try again. Or just break the disc. It's a joke that Sega even let Sonic leave its offices in such a state. But it's so broken you have to wonder if that's the punchline of the whole thing. Atrocious, hilarious misery. <laughs> 